Thicket Excavations is a quarry just northeast of Concord. It still has a big pre-war sign outside, covered with all sorts of warnings. All vehicles must check in at the office. Safety equipment must be worn at all times. This facility is not open to the public. The quarry is large, but it's flooded with water. The quarry cuts into the rocks climbing up the hillside, and then goes deep down into the earth. We don't really know how deep. The water is too opaque. But we can tell that this was likely a marble quarry. Right next to the quarry, we see a whole bunch of blocks of what appears to be a marble. Looks like before the bombs dropped, the operators of this quarry were finishing these stones for shipment. We also see a number of trailers dotting the quarry. These were likely the offices for the workers and managers who worked here. Inside one of them, we find a still functioning terminal. There's only one note called shipment log, and we see the kinds of companies that were purchasing stone from Thicket Excavations. Tables and tops, pillar pushers, interior slabs, top drawer living, ornate obelisks. Looks like some of this stone was destined for kitchen countertops. Maybe I was wrong about it being marble. Maybe instead it was a light-colored granite. At any rate, in the terminal, we find a holotape. These are the personal logs of some man named Sully. On June 17th of this year, Sully arrived at Thicket Excavations. Sully thinks that this quarry is a great spot. He's gonna get the right crew together to keep the place locked down. Sully likes this spot because traders tend to run close enough for easy pickings? Does he mean that he likes the fact that traders come by so close so that he has access to all of their wares? Or is he perhaps thinking of stealing from them? At any rate, he expresses frustration that the quarry is filled with water. He's hoping that some intact drainage pipes he found still work. However, in the next entry, we learn that getting the pump working is not going to be that easy. A few days later, he managed to get most of the connections working for the pump. He patched a bunch of leaks in the pipes, but he's been hearing noises. There are still some pipes in the water he hasn't fixed yet because the noise Noises have scared him. He's thinking of getting a friend of his to go into the water to take care of it for him. This room has some decent loot, a stash of caps, some chems, and a few locked containers. Inside one of the trailers on the southern side of the quarry, we find a copy of Taboo Tattoos. Permanently unlocks new, unique facial tattoos. On the edge of the quarry, we see the big yellow pump that Scully was talking about, and two big pipes diving down deep into the quarry. X688 tells us that he thinks this is a perfect spot for a Mirelurk den. Perfect spot for a Mirelurk den. And right next to this pump, sitting at a cooking station, is none other than Sully Mathis himself, the author of that holotape. I could use a hand here if you're all done gawking, you know. Help you with what exactly? I'm trying to fix this old water pump. Should be plenty of scrap in here. If I can get it drained out. Now that holotape entry where you talked about traders being easy pickings, bothers me a little bit. We can ask him what he's really up to here. No, what are you really up to here? Maybe I got some friends who like to go spelunking. Maybe I need a new hole to throw smart guys like you into. Are you gonna help or what? I could probably help for a few caps extra. I was gonna give you something anyway. 75 caps for your time? Not sure if I'm up for it. A couple more caps might change my mind though. Not gonna make this easy, are you? All right, 100 caps then. You want this pump fixed, right? Throw in a few more caps and you've got a deal. Okay, 125, but that's it. Any more and I'll just do it myself. What do you need help with? The pump isn't in top shape, but it should at least start. There must be some leaky connections flooding me out. Think you could fix them? The leaks will be underwater. Look for bubbles and you should find them. Well, we didn't get a satisfactory answer from Sully, and he seems harmless enough. Just a man trying to drain a quarry to turn it into a home. I'm sure we can lend him a helping hand. At the edge of the quarry, we find a big red button. This is attached to a stone elevator. This is what they used to get the big blocks of stone out of the quarry. After unlocking the toolbox sitting here, we can use the elevator to go down into the quarry. Even after we hit the water, the elevator still takes us all the way down. It'll be easy to drown if you don't have the aqua boy or aqua girl perk, but this character does. However, this deep in the water, it's impossible to see. We're looking for pipes that are springing a leak, and since we can't see very far in any direction, let's go back to the surface of the water to see if we can see any disturbances, and immediately we do. In the northern corner of the quarry, we see some bubbles rising to the top. Diving down, we see a big yellow knob attached to a pipe. It's this valve that we can twist to repair the pipe. 
I'm not sure how twisting a knob repairs a pipe, but there you go. It's clear why Sully wanted us to do it. Remember in his terminal, he said that he kept hearing knocking noises, strange scratching sounds, and he was too afraid, but so far we haven't run into any Mirelurk kings or monsters. Going west, we find some more bubbles rising to the top. Diving down, we see another yellow valve connected to a pipe. This is pipe two of three. The third one is in the southeastern corner of the quarry, right next to a big pipe coming out of the water. Diving down, we see the third yellow valve, and twisting it, we can close off the pipe. To get back up, we can climb any of the various ladders and scaffolding surrounding the quarry, or we can swim on down to that elevator and take it up to the top. Hopping back in our power armor, we can tell the good news to Sully Mathis. That's a ticket. You do the honors. Hit that switch on the end of the pump. That's done. Just listen to her go. Wait a second. Did you hear that? As soon as we flip the switch, we get attacked by Mirelurks. Sounds like Sully wasn't imagining those scratching and tapping noises he talked about in his holotape. Guess X688 was right about this being the perfect spot for a Mirelurk, Dan. After the Mirelurks are dead, he takes the time to rub it in. Perfect spot for a Mirelurk dead. Mirelurks. I guess I shouldn't be surprised that stirred him up. Anyway, I still got some tinkering to do on this thing. Shouldn't be too hard now, though. Thanks for pitching in. Here's a little something before you clear out. And with that, he pays us, and we complete Pull the Plug. Well, I'm feeling pretty satisfied with this. Here I've gone and helped an industrious, hard-working settler in the Commonwealth. I'm gonna head back to the Institute and take a nap for 24 hours or so. Well, that was a nice break, you know what? I just realized I took that magazine away from Thicket Excavations. It probably belonged to Sully, so I'm gonna go ahead and hop back in my power armor and travel all the way back to Thicket Excavations to return it to the guy. It's the neighborly thing to do. As we get close, we see that the quarry has changed. We find raider decorations, big tarps and tents, and big spikes. And there's a new house built on top of one of the trailers armed with a machine gun turret. Raiders now inhabit the quarry, and they attack us as we get near. The raiders have built another little shack overlooking the quarry, and we have to jump up there to get rid of them. The quarry is now fully drained. Looks like it took about 24 hours for the water to completely drain. It is a sprawling quarry, and the raiders have moved right in. This must be the crew and friends that Sully talked about. He really was talking about raiding traders that passed through. He didn't say pick them off as if he was gonna have the best pickings of their wares. No, he was gonna pick them off by killing them and stealing their belongings. We just helped a raider move into a new home. Now, if I were on one of my good Minuteman or Railroad characters, I would want to clear this quarry for ethical reasons. But I'm not. I'm on my evil Institute character. So instead, I'm going to clear this quarry for practical reasons. I'm sure to find a lot of great loot, and I bet I want it more than Sully. We find a path carved in the rock that winds all the way down the interior of this quarry, but raiders stand there and continue to take pot shots at us as we run around. I found Pain Train to be a very useful perk here. You can even knock some of these raiders off and cause them to fall to their deaths. When we reach the very bottom, we see that a new shack has been erected at the northern end of the quarry. Here we find Sully Mathis. You're already dead. But now, Sully is a raider. He still wears his Yushanka hat, but look at his face. He's completely painted it up. Well, this is what he gets for not being upfront with me when I asked him what was really going on here. Interestingly, we find two Mirelurk pens here at the bottom of the quarry. There's also a third pen up top. I missed it going down because I was fighting all these raiders, but I found it when I came up again. Even after draining the quarry, and even after killing Sully Mathis, X688 just will not stop talking about how this is a great place for a Mirelurk den. Perfect spot for a Mirelurk den. Yes, X6, we know. Perfect spot 
for a Mirelurk den. I'm literally standing in the den right now. Stop stating the obvious. Now we plowed right through this quarry because we're a higher level character in power armor with pain train, but if you're a lower level character, this can be a very challenging fight. One tip is that if you're a stealth character, you can unhatch the doors to these pens, releasing the Mirelurks. If you do, the Mirelurks will escape and attack the raiders on the ground. But what are they doing here? Why are there Mirelurks in these pens? Well, our best tip comes from the Fallout 4 Survival Guide. In the Thicket Excavations section of the guide, it tells us that Thicket Excavations is well known all around the Commonwealth as having the sweetest Mirelurk meat. That's right, these raiders were farming Mirelurks, corralling them, collecting eggs, raising them, keeping them in these cages, and then selling their Mirelurk meat. This is very strange to me, because that's not a bad thing. You don't need to be a raider to set up a Mirelurk farm, a Mirelurk butchery. It's not like they're doing what Theodore Collins at the Long Neck Lakowski Cannery was doing. Mirelurks aren't ghouls. People eat Mirelurks. Mirelurks can be a delicacy. Why would Sully hesitate to tell us about his plans to turn this into a Mirelurk farm? Why would he simultaneously have plans to start this farm and then also raid traders? And how could Thicket Excavations become well known in the Commonwealth as having the sweetest Mirelurk meat if this thing was filled with water 24 hours ago? Well, I'll tell you what I think happened here. I think the original intention that Bethesda had was for this place to be a Mirelurk farm. Farm, inhabited by farmers and butchers, not by raiders. But my gut is that Bethesda didn't really know how to turn this into an interesting encounter for the player, with these guys being innocent farmers and butchers. So instead, they reworked the encounter to remove any mention of sweet Mirelurk meat from any of the dialogues or holotapes that we find here, and instead turned Sully Mathis into a raider, giving us the encounter that we know today. But I bet these Mirelurk corrals at the very bottom had already been built, and so they left them in to keep the encounter much more interesting. The only thing we have left that explains them is that one little note in the Fallout 4 survival guide. Of course, it could also be that these raiders were keeping these Mirelurks for their own use. Maybe they weren't selling the Mirelurk eggs and meat, but butchering these Mirelurks for themselves so that they can have a tasty treat. That is also a possibility. Perfect spot for a Mirelurk den. Now we can take the big block elevator all the way to the top for a fast exit if we want, but I ran down here pretty fast killing all those raiders, so I'm gonna take my time looting everything as I wind my way back up. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of Thicket Excavations and Sully Mathis in Fallout 4. When I did this encounter in my first and second playthrough, it was extremely challenging for me. But how about you? When did you tackle Thicket Excavations? Did you see through Sully Mathis's ploy from the very beginning? Or did he fool you? Or did you drain the quarry and then walk away and never found your way back? Well, if so, now you know what's waiting for you when you return. What topic would you like to see next? I publish a new Fallout video six days a week. I range in topics from Fallout 4 to Fallout New Vegas, and I'm even going to be tiptoeing into Fallout 3 soon. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss my next video, be sure to subscribe and click that bell notification button. I've got a shirt shop, ladies and gentlemen. If you're interested in an Oxhorn or a Fallout-inspired shirt, check out the link to my shop in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers can access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video. Perfect spot for a Mirelurk den.